from the people who sell those crap ornamental figurines in the Sunday newspaper supplements. For only 12 monthly payments of £29.95 plus VAT, it's... Mummy, I can see that man's ass. Made only from the finest porcelain and guaranteed to look tacky on any mahogany sideboard. Mummy, I can see that man's ass. Evocatively captures baby's first experience of a next-door neighbour sunbathing naked. Mummy, I can see that man's ass. It's handcrafted in sweatshops by Lithuanian dwarfs. Each of this exclusive limited edition of only 3 million units comes with a genuine certificate of authenticity signed by Pancho. Hello. Marvel at the amazing attention to every detail. The winky on that figurine's exquisitely sculptured. It looks just like a real todger. Can you afford not to put in an order for? Mummy, I can see that man's ass. Coming soon. Mummy, I can see that man's ass is not available in shops. Minimum order, 200 units. Batteries not included. Comes with a free Toby jug that will squeal and call you Judith between the hours of 8 and 10. I dream of sitting on root vegetables. Terms and conditions apply. The Life and Times of Osset Flushdyke. One critic said this show was misogynistic. The stupid bloody woman. Episode 3 is sponsored by Mummy. I can see that man's ass. Osset Flushdyke liked it when other men grabbed his parts. Yeah, I, I think I need to explain that one. Yes. I refer, of course, to Osset's parts in the plays put on by the minor-swelling dramatic society. Egypt beckoned, and with Osset pulling out of the company's production of Hamlet, competition for the male lead was fierce. Guido Spatchcock, my master's very keen understudy, was not unused to grabbing Osset's parts when they became available, or groping his todger in rehearsals. You, for God's sake! What? That was Osset Flushdyke, and it starts Simon Carter's Osset Flushdyke. You're right! All right! I'm sorry! It won't happen again. Look, I don't care how many funny looks you shoot me, you're not making me a man bitch. No, sit down! There's no need to leave, I... Oh, you utter cow pat. Which button is it? Oh, no, not that. Yes. It was October 1922, and Osset had found an ancient map to the lost tomb of Humbaba, an evil Egyptian pharaoh. Legend told of the unimaginable riches awaiting the tomb's discoverer. And so it was that my master, his uncle Bruno, and I, Albert Jenkins, boarded the slow boat to Egypt. Destination, El Kaga. October 12th, 1922. After a month at sea, our ship docks in Egypt tonight. This morning, I was upset to find Jenkins had fallen into the sea and drowned. Luckily, Uncle Bruno had made friends with the ship's resident band, so I was able to sing Jenkins this touching tribute. Jenkins, this is really such a shocker. You've gone and popped your clogs, my dear old cocker. You fell into the sea and you drowned, oh dearie me. Very soon a shark will have you for his tea. Jenkins, how will I get by without you? There was something so wonderful about you. You cooked me all my meals, taught me values and ideals, and often walked round naked in high heels. Jenkins, you did all you could to serve me. Despite the fact you were some weird old heavy I'll miss your vanity mask, your attention to the task And your shiny studded zip-up leather mask Jenkins, how I loved you, please believe me But hang on to my bleary eyes, deceive me Oh, good Lord, you're still alive, how on earth did you survive? What you mean, you just went for a snorkel dive Jenkins, please don't think me sentimental When I said I loved you, oh, so soft and gentle I so truly meant to say those words in a manly way I realize they've come out a trifle gay What a load of cheesy old cack What? You mean the reason you were floating on the water and keeping very still is because you just didn't want to scare the fishies? That's absolutely right, sir God, I feel like a tosser But the song was so beautiful, sir and I'd just like you to know that if I was a large-breasted farming wench called Molly, up with a lark to tug udders, and you were a dashing young stableman, if the moon was right and there was musk in the air and possibly a small pig, well, we'll leave it there, sir. Right, Jenkins. Yes. 
Actually, I'm quite aroused. Oh, so am I. Well, I've got a woody. I'm just glad you're not dead, Jenkins. Well, strictly speaking, sir, I can't actually die because I am, in effect, a reanimated corpse since being crushed to death by an enormous snake and having a witch doctor reanimate me in a sinister voodoo-style ritual. Oh, I remember it clearly. Yes, sir. So I am, in fact, an undead walking cadaver that could literally fall apart at any time. Good. Well, that's nice, Jenkins. I can pull my arm off, for instance. Oh, my God! And use it as a club in a combat situation. Steward? Yes? Take this. See what I mean, sir? He can't swim, Jenkins. Then all I do is screw the arm back. He's being eaten by sharks, Jenkins. Lie a little plaster of Paris to the joint. Step into my cabin, Jenkins. They're going mad out there. That's because Jenkins just killed a completely innocent man, Uncle Bruno. No, he didn't, Offit. Jenkins only attacked him because he was going to shoot us. <gasps> Was he? I saw him pull a gun. He was part of the sinister group that's trying to beat us to the treasure of Humbaba. Oh, I'd forgotten all about that. We know where it is, do we? We have a map, sir. Our enemies also have a copy, but we have a trump card up our sleeve. Which is? This letter, written to Uncle Bruno by the German archaeologist Rolf Werfenhofer. And what does it say again? You want me to remind you? It's really quite odd that that letter talks to us. The tomb of Shumbaba has many booby traps which will surely kill you unless you seek out Bathsheba. Look, I, I thought she were dead. I am. Fair play, who's Bathsheba? Seek her in Cafe Abdullah El Kaga. I can tell you no more. We're here, sir. Are we? Where? Cafe Abdullah, sir. You dozed off. We piggybacked you off the ship, hot-wired an army jeep, and drove to El Carga, followed by shifty foreigners firing machine guns. We shunted them off a mountain road outside the city. Their car exploded. You didn't wake me? You looked so peaceful, sir. Oh, fair enough. Why are we wearing traditional Egyptian peasant garb, Uncle Bruno? So we can blend in, off it. There's no doubt that those shifty foreigners were in league with our enemies, and that somebody wants us dead. How incredibly dramatic. And the mysterious Bathsheba's in this cafe. She is, sir. Then there's not a moment to lose. Grab handfuls and smother. What? What are you doing, sir? I'm smearing my face with camel dung. Why? Do you mean it's not necessary to do it? Oh, bugger. I'm sorry, but sir. But I've got crack all over my face. And so it was that we ventured into the seedy den of sin that was called Cafe Abdullah. But would we find Bathsheba there? Would she help us? And would Osset be able to resist the exotic charms of all those half-naked Egyptian dancing girls? Jenkins, they are liberally drizzled in baby oil. Jolly well done, sir. Osset Flush Dyke starred Simon Carter as Osset, Gideon Clear as Jenkins and Pancho, Bob Sinfield as Uncle Bruno, and Andrew Jordan as Ralph Werfenhofer. Mummy, I Can See That Man's Ass featured Simon Carter, Gideon Clear, Lindsay Frost, David Lucas, and Becky Whitcroft. Osset, written by Simon Carter and produced by David Lucas, featured the music of Rob Vandenberg, Julia Eklar, Incidental Fusion, David Kemper's The Manatee Man, Paul and Jeff Vidov, Care of Music Alley.com, The Jenkins Lament, composed and performed by Edmund Clear. For all the latest nonsense, visit ossetflushdyke.co.uk or follow me on Twitter at ossetflushdyke. That's osset, O double S E double T, flush as in lavatory, dyke as in woman with comfortable shoes. And now, playing us out, Mr. Pete Gold, care of petegold.co.uk. Tinkety Ballet Talk. There's a voice that speaks to all the nations as they join each other hand in hand. A voice that mutters as they board their flights to our green and slightly built up land. It echoes through the cobbled streets of Stepney It rings in every cockney shell I hear It pours from the hearts and minds of Londoners And here is what it's saying loud and clear Piss off, we don't want the Olympics Please listen, we are begging pretty please They're predicting half a million daily visitors And our infrastructure's already on its knees 
so please do not come to the Olympics. The Olympics. You'll just be disappointed if you do. Yes, you will. You'll find that we don't all talk like Dick, Dick Van Dyke. Dyke. And the rumors of casual racism are true. We hate you all. It's more than a billion over budget. Over budget. And Londoners will have to foot the bill. No, oh, I don't care, cause I've just bought a one-bed one flat in Stratford, and it's now worth half a mil. Hang on, but there might be some advantage. Some advantage. To glean from my newfound hosting role. Hosting role. The dome will finally be more than just a parasol. And the East End will be more than just a hole. Only just. All right, we will host the Olympics. The Olympics. Though all our fists and teeth we have to clench. Clench, clench. So what if it's all a big fiasco? At least we got one over on the garlic sucking go a smoky, slightly more racist than even the bassist. At least we got one over on the French.